Hey guys, Dr. Yo here. So you're probably aware that there is a big presidential election coming up in 2020 and that healthcare has been dominating our news cycles, our debates and our discussions. The US healthcare system is a patchwork of public and privately funded programs and how they all work can be confusing to understand, especially when they're new proposals and ideas being introduced. There are some Democrats, such as Senators Bernie Sanders and Elizabeth Warren, who have proposed a Medicare for all health care plan. But there are other Democrats, such as former Vice President Joe Biden, who have proposed an expansion of the Affordable Care Act and a public option. On the other side of the aisle, Republicans have suggested the American Health Care Act and an increase in health savings account contributions, which is tax-free money that you can set aside for healthcare expenses. Any discussion about changing healthcare cannot be viewed in a vacuum because there are a lot of different players and pieces. And it's not as simple as saying, let's get rid of the Affordable Care Act or let's get rid of private insurance and have Medicare for all. 17.8% of the United States GDP is spent on healthcare. So you can imagine that any potential changes can have a ripple effect on our entire economy. And if we don't get it right, it can be catastrophic for our nation. The US has historically been a volume driven healthcare system centered around a fee for service payment structure. But with rising healthcare costs, there's been a slow transition into becoming a value based system that focuses on high quality but lowered costs. A lot of this transitioning can be attributed to a 2000 report by the Institute of Medicine called to Air is Human, which shocked the general public and the medical community by highlighting how poor and inefficient the US healthcare system was. This report said that 98,000 Americans die every year and $29 billion are spent on our poor and inefficient healthcare system. To make matters worse, the 2018 Census Bureau said that 27.5 million Americans, or 8.5% of our population, had no health care coverage. So before we have any discussion or debate about potential changes, it is important to first understand how our current public and private programs work and how they're funded. And this video is an intro to a series of videos where I'm going to be examining the US healthcare system to clear up any confusion so that you can follow the discussions and debates that are happening in Washington DC and on the campaign trail. And in this particular video, I'm going to start out by giving you an overview of the US healthcare system. And in subsequent videos, I will go in depth into each of the programs. So guys, stay tuned and I'll dive right in. There are six public insurance programs in the United States. Medicare, Medicaid, the Children's Health Insurance Program, Veterans Administration, TRICARE, and the Indian Health Services. Medicare is a federal social program that provides health insurance for people over 65, people with disabilities, and with ALS. Medicare and Medicaid were both established in 1965 by President Lyndon Johnson and Medicare is the largest single purchaser of healthcare, covering 13% of Americans and accounting for 15% of our total federal spending. Now, Medicare has four different parts to it. Part A covers your hospital expenses, and it is funded by contributions you make in your paycheck as part of your Federal Insurance Contribution Act, or FICA taxes. Part B covers your doctor and other medical expenses and is oftentimes called supplemental insurance because you have to either pay a monthly premium or get secondary insurance. Part C is called Medicare Advantage and these are Medicare plans that are sold through a private insurance company that is approved and authorized by Medicare. Part D is your prescription coverage and these are private insurance options allowing for subsidized coverage of prescription drugs. Medicaid is a joint federal and state social welfare program 
that provides health care coverage for people and families with limited resources and incomes. 19% of Americans are covered under Medicaid, and after the Affordable Care Act was passed in 2010, to be eligible for Medicaid, your income levels needed to be 133% under the federal poverty line. However, this was challenged and overturned by the Supreme Court, so now the Medicaid eligibility varies by state. The Children's Health Insurance Program was passed into law as part of the Balanced Budget Act of 1997. And this is a joint federal and state program that provides health insurance to children whose families make too much to qualify for Medicaid but still cannot afford private insurance. So the military has two different public health programs. One is the Veterans Administration, which is overseen by the Department of Veterans Affairs. Now there are 1,700 hospitals, clinics, and long-term care facilities as part of the VA system that provides care to over 9 million Americans. The federal government owns these VA facilities and the healthcare providers are employees of the government. The second system regarding the military is the military health system, which is overseen by the Department of Defense. And this is a network of 57 hospitals and 400 clinics that provides healthcare to servicemen and women in the Army, Navy, Air Force, Coast Guard, and Marines, and their dependents. But for those individuals in the military who cannot get their care through a military hospital or clinic, the government provides them with an insurance plan called TRICARE so that they are able to get their health care through private hospitals and doctors. And finally, the Indian Health Services, which is not an insurance or a social welfare program, but rather it is money set aside by Congress to provide care and some basic health services to 2.2 million Native Americans and Native Alaskans. But this money set aside is not enough to provide them with comprehensive health care coverage and the care they would need. And it is encouraged that Native Americans and Native Alaskans get some form of health insurance or health coverage. So when it comes to private insurance, it can be either purchased on an individual or a group basis. Now close to 50% of Americans get their health insurance through an employer-based program. But if you don't have access to one of these programs, then you can purchase health insurance through an individual marketplace. Now prior to the passage of the Affordable Care Act in 2010, the individual marketplace was determined by medical underwriting, which meant that if you had a pre-existing condition, this could be a reason for your application to be denied. But after the passage of the Affordable Care Act, medical underwriting was deemed illegal, and anyone could purchase health insurance in the marketplace. So guys, I just gave you a quick overview of the US healthcare system. And as you can probably tell, this patchwork of public and privately funded programs can be confusing to understand. But I'm really excited for the next couple of videos where I'm going to be examining each of these programs more in depth so that we can have constructive discussions and debates on what are the next steps we should do to make our healthcare system efficient and accessible to all Americans. So thank you for watching. If you like this video, hit that like button. Click the bell so you get notifications when I've posted a new video and consider subscribing to the channel so you get up-to-date information on topics related to fitness, health, and medicine. And until the next video, ciao.